Hey, what is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. Happy Thursday. We are one day ahead of the October 22nd releases of Celebrations. You still should be able to find the lunch boxes, the collector's chests in a lot of retail locations. So if you pre-ordered from Pokemon Center, pre-ordered from GameStop, uh, these should still be out there. We did talk about delays a couple days ago, uh, but those are more impacting uh, LGSs, hobby stores, places like that. These should still be at least somewhat available in retail locations. Also the Ultra Premium Collection and the uh, VMAX Figure Collection. So let me know in the comment section down below if you've been able to find anything so far um, or, you know, happy hunting. Good luck to you. Uh, but I hope you guys are all doing well. I've got a really fun, uh, very important video today. Kind of something that is important for everybody, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a collector, uh, whatever the case may be, whether you're an aspiring business owner when it comes to the Pokemon trading card game. And a lot of this focuses on information that I've shared before in the past, kind of giving it in more detail detail, uh, especially if you're looking at starting your own uh, Pokemon card store, you know, maybe doing it on the side, maybe doing it to help feed your collection, help grow your collection, or really if you're just looking to get the most value out of your collection when it comes to trades, a lot of this comes from the announcement that was made yesterday that we talked about in yesterday's video going through um, regionals that are going to be starting back up this upcoming March in uh, March of 2022. We are going to have North American regionals, internationals in June. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm very, very excited. I hope you guys are as pumped as I am. Even if you're not somebody who plays competitively, just going to these events to meet people, meet other collectors. And there's usually quite a few card vendors that have some, uh, you know, meta items, but also a lot of exclusive items, a lot of rare, hard to find collectibles. So it's definitely a lot of fun. I would recommend checking it out if you haven't already. But before we dive too deep into things, I do want to remind everybody that we are in week two currently of our eight weeks of celebrations giveaway. So this week we're giving away the Dragapult pin collection along with the Charizard and Sylveon boxes. I have them both right here. So all three boxes are going to go to one winner. Uh, and the drawing for that will be in tomorrow's video that is going to release on Friday, and then we will start week three. I haven't decided what we're going to be giving away for week three yet, but if you haven't already entered in week two, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel. So hit that button down below that says subscribe, and then when you hit it, it should say subscribe. Duh. I think that's how it works. Uh, and then go back, watch last week Friday's video where I go over pull rates for celebrations. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like, a love, a thumbs up, uh, and comment. Uh, and then you are entered to win. I will choose the winner tomorrow in tomorrow's video, and then we'll start week three. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. With that being said, I know I talk fast, but that's because I'm terrible at editing and I don't really have the time to edit. So uh, bear with me as I ramble quickly. Uh, we're going to jump into things. So I've talked a lot about TCG Player in a lot of videos and I haven't done a business video too much, but with the announcement of competitive play starting back up, a lot of competitive players, a lot of people who play even casually at local leagues uh, are going to want to start getting physical copies of cards. And that's why it is important to start really going through your inventory, going through your bulk going through your collection and seeing what you can pull out of there that is going to help with the value of your collection. A lot of people open up packs and immediately they just go straight for that ultra rare slot or that rare and reverse hollow slot and not not always in a pack is that card going to be your most valuable piece of that pack. A lot of times there could be a trainer card in there, there could be an uncommon that has value to it that could even be worth more than the ultra rare that you may have just pulled. So keep that in mind when you are opening cards. I highly recommend people sort as they are opening packs. So often people just open up packs, look to see if they got an ultra rare and then put it in a pile and they just kind of build up the piles, put them in a box and then just kind of forget about them until they want to trade in bulk, which as a reminder, you can trade in bulk to us. We are starting to accept bulk for Fusion Strike. 3,500 commons and uncommons will get you a booster box. But before you do that, I would highly recommend going through your bulk. And the best advice that I can give you is right away, even if you don't want to painstakingly sort through it, pull out all, all the trainer cards. Because a lot of times the trainer cards, even though they may not be as important to you, are going to have the most value. And I'm going to talk to you specifically about TCG Player today. If you haven't already created a TCG Player account, it's something I definitely recommend. I've talked about this before and I've kind of given a tutorial on how to sign up for a TCG player account just to get rid of a lot of your excess singles so that way it actually helps keep the prices down for the competitive players and at the same time helps build up your inventory a little bit because then you can use that money on added pieces of your collection and places like that. So we're going to go over to my handy dandy spreadsheet because I know you guys love looking at Google Sheets just as much as I do. I love just making a good spreadsheet. It just... 
ah, there's nothing better in life. There is, but you know, for the sake of this video, I'm going to say that there's not. All right. So what we have here is just a bunch of cards that I am saying is going to have some impact on competitive play. Not all, not all of these are going to be winners. And when we start competitive play back up, this is definitely something you want to learn about. You want to research because if you are looking at starting your own card business or just expanding your collection, you're definitely going to want to know what to pull out. When I was first getting back into the game, seeing cards like Max Potion and N, you know, that are four or five dollars a piece, and I was just kind of throwing them in bulk lots, I had no idea what I was doing. And there was so much value that I was kind of just giving away. So make sure you're going through your collections and pulling out really all the trainers I think that might have an opportunity and I'm going to show you a little bit more why I think that in a second here but these are all the cards so all I did was I went through TCG player and I just did a sort sorted through an advanced uh, advanced search and filtered uh, uncommons and then trainers and, um, and energy cards from Sword and Shield on, so the standard format, because that's what the tournaments are going to be. So these cards are going to somewhat rise in price over the next several months, and this is something that you want to start prepping for now, because it's going to get you take you probably a couple months, because you're not going to want to go through all of your bulk and all of your collection really in one day, because it, it does get kind of taxing and kind of boring. Uh, but these are some of the cards that are going to have somewhat of value moving forward that you want to pull out, and you may want to look at listing on TCG Player once competitive play resumes in 2020. 22. So I've got every card listed here along with what set they come from and then the market price that is listed currently on TCG player. So Capture Energy, for example, sells for $3.05. That, what did I just do? That came from uh, Rebel Clash. Boss's Orders, which is a holographic card from Rebel Clash, $2.58. Horror Energy from Rebel Clash, $1.73. Training Court from Rebel Clash. We get a cool uh, Secret Rare Training Court in Fusion Strike, which looks really neat. Neato Burrito, uh, $1.31. Marnie from Sword and Shield Base, $1.30. Quick Ball from Sword and Shield Base, $0.87. Cents. Galar Mine from Rebel Clash, $0.84. Cents. Energy Search from Sword and Shield Base, $0.77. Cents. Boss's Orders from Shining Fates, $0.74. Cents. Evolution Incense from Sword and Shield Base, $0.74. Cents. Level Ball from Battle Styles, $0.73. Cents. Professor's Research, Sword and Shield Base, $0.49. Cents. I'm not going to go through all of these. You can see Crushing Hammer, Professor Research, Raihan, Scoop Up Net, and you can kind of go through this list on your own if you want to just pause the video or whatever the case may be. And I know that these prices aren't necessarily like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing this is so much money that's not going to be the case but quantities matter and when you're talking about trainers a lot of players and a lot of competitive players are going to want to have play sets and a play set is four a play set is four of each of these items or these trainer cards so they're going to want four evolutions in cents at 75 cents a piece so that all of a sudden turns into a three dollar item instead of just a 74 cent item as long as you have a quantity of four a lot of people are going to be pulling 10 12 15 of these if they're opening up a case of a new set or even a booster box of a new set you're going to be opening up a few of these over time as you continue to open packs there's probably more of these in your bulk of several of these and like i said as competitive play starts opening up i do see some of these cards going up a little bit not a huge amount but you might see a nickel you might see a dime you might see a quarter increase in a lot of these and when you're talking about a percentage that's a huge huge amount compared to where they're starting at when we're going over the actual pokemon i did include ultra rares i did include v maxes in this because I think that that's kind of where the format is headed right now, and that could change. We don't have Fusion Strike yet. There's going to be another set that comes out before uh, competitive play starts back up. But these are all the cards that are kind of wrecking havoc in the format online right now that could have some potential moving forward. Some of them have fallen off a little bit, uh, but like Alchemy V, Alchemy V Max, uh, those haven't d had as much success, and we really haven't had any huge tournaments on PTCGO for a while now uh, because the Players' Cup was what, like June, July. Uh, but we have Umbreon V Max, Suicune V. Drizzile, which continues to be a very expensive, uncommon card that continues to just hang around that four to five dollar mark. Shadow Rider, Calyrex, Jolteon, V Max, Umbreon V. Really, Evolving Skies is crazy in general. Um, I know Evolving Skies is kind of short printed right now, but we do expect that uh, second wave to come out at the beginning of November. Some distributors are already starting to get Elite Trainer boxes in, so we should see more singles start hitting uh, hitting the market, which should help bring some of these prices down a little bit. But these are things you want to at least keep in the back of your mind moving forward. If you can pick them up at a decent price, you can hold on to them for your inventory. Uh, Inteleon from Chilling Rain. It's just a hollow rare, but it's selling for $6.17. Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX from 
Chilling Rain. Uh, going down, we have Leafeon, VMAX, and Zacian V, probably the oldest card on this list. Sword and Shield, still a very good card from the competitive standpoint, $3.89. Then we've got Dragapult VMAX from Rebel Clash, $8.21. Even though that card has been reprinted uh, a couple times because it was a promo for Shining Fates. Uh, Houndoom, the other hollow rare that I have on the list from Battle Styles, $1.37. Galarian Moltres and Galarian Articuno V from Chilling Rain, uh, $3.15 and $1.41 respectfully. Like I said, just keep an eye on these cards. These might go up a little bit uh, as competitive play resumes, depending on how things go in testing. And that's something that you definitely want to pay attention to moving forward. There's a lot of competitive websites out there that you can kind of read up on to see what decks are doing well as people continue to play test, as League Cups start back up, as League Challenges start back up, as people go to their local leagues, uh, you get a better idea of where the meta is going to form. Now, if we go down to the second tab that I have on the bottom, I went into my old TCG player account to see what items I had on there from about a year and a half ago now. So we stopped selling on TCG player pretty much in July of last year, uh, right at the end of July. So a lot of these cards here have already kind of gone out of the format because competitive play kind of stopped, right? Like the pandemic took over, competitive play was halted, and you couldn't find uh, you couldn't find local tournaments to go to or, or even regional tournaments to go to. So these cards actually did drop quite a bit in value. But there was a huge, huge slew of different trainer cards that we had listed that were above that quarter market price. And these were significantly lower than where they were uh, you know, a few months ahead of that, a few months before that, when regional action was still going on. So I just have a list here of not even half of the cards, not even half of the trainers that we had posted on TCG Player, a lot of them in, you know, quantities of 40 or 50 at a time. And these are things that we would constantly look for. I remember even making buy lists for a lot of these cards, saying I would buy these cards for a dollar in any quantity or whatever the case may be, so people could get more value for them than what they would get, uh, you know, just sitting around in a bulk box or trading it in, you know, bulk for a booster box or selling their bulk, you know, for four, three, four cents, whatever the case may be at the time. Uh, so Dragon Talon, Fiery Flint, Switch Raft from Dragon Majesty. You can tell these were I categorized just by set, so I didn't go through too much of them, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going through them now because I don't want to be redundant or repetitive, but you can just see there is a lot of them, and I got sick of typing, so that's why I stopped, but I went all the way up to 41 different copies, which is why this is line 42 here. Uh, Pokemon Communication from Team Up, which we had listed at 29 cents, and there was only a couple Pokemon that I actually pulled, Quagsire and Turtonator, but I can think, you know, off the top of my head, cards like Volcanion from Unbroken Bonds, Mew from Unbroken Bonds. These were cards, Marshadow from Unbroken Bonds, that were selling for three, four dollars a piece. Even that Volcanion in in its prime was selling for ten, eleven dollars. So there are hollow rares, there are uncommon cards that are so so powerful in the competitive format. Cards like Shrine of Punishment, cards like um Custom Catcher that we're selling at a time for anywhere between $7 and $10 a piece for an uncommon card. You know, that's five times the amount of what a bulk ultra rare is selling for right now. So um, out of a set, 75% of your ultra rares probably are bulk. Uh, just, you know, the basic V cards. So uh, to have an uncommon card that's selling for five times that amount is pretty crazy. And then if we go below, this is just to kind of wet everybody's whistle, I guess. Uh, I went through the payment for July. And this isn't information that I typically like to share, but I have talked about this in the past and I kind of wanted just to prove that it's possible and prove that it's out there. So this is just July. This just goes over our payments from July and the orders that we took in. So basically the way TCG Player works on a payment schedule is you get paid like twice a week roughly when they initiate payments to you. Uh, so we're looking at the end of June when, initiated, when a payment was initiated and then it would show up in the account July 1st. So I took all of the accounts or all of the payments that would have shown up in the month of July. So you can see here, we've gotten a total of 626 in the month of July, 2020, which totaled $11,549.30. A lot of those would focus on cards like this. Uh, and the reason that that number is so high is because when you're selling four copies of Chaotic Swell, four copies of a Fisherman, four copies of an Acerola, all to the same person, because a lot of people are buying numerous amounts because they want to get the most bang for their buck when it comes to shopping from one store, um, that totals uh, an average sale of $18.45. So you're looking at an average order of $18.45. We did 626 orders for the month of July, which was a total of $11,549.30. Uh, on average, it was 156 and a half orders per week. So nothing, you know, over the top, nothing crazy like that. Not where you're packing up orders, insane amounts every single day. There was obviously a couple outliers in here, like um, the middle of July where we only, we went a week basically, or a few days where we only sold 
sold four orders. Uh, I think I had taken, I must have taken down uh, the inventory to catch up or something like that. But you're looking at roughly, you know, 40 orders a day, something around that nature uh, for $2,887 in sales on a weekly basis, which is a very, very strong point. And I'm not saying you're going to be getting to this point right away. And if you're somebody who's just looking at expanding your collection, this probably isn't even a point you want to get to. But this is definitely something that is going to help as you move into competitive play, you know, either help you expand your, your decks and cards that you need in order to play competitively or expand your collection if you're looking for cards that might be more vintage or a little bit more out of your price point or even saving up for future booster boxes, future sets, things like that. So it's definitely a good thing to keep in mind. It is very, very much possible. <sighs> With that being said, that is all of the information that I wanted to share with you. I hope you guys find it valuable. Um, I wish I had somebody who was telling me all this stuff when I first started out. So that's why I thought, hey, you know, it could be something that people would find useful. I really wanted to record a video today on the Ultra Premium Collection to find out exactly how limited it was. But unfortunately, I didn't get all the information that I wanted to which is super un, un, unfair. Un, it's a little frustrating. But uh, I did reach out to a couple marketing companies and a couple contacts that I've made over the years to see roughly how many um, Target is going to be getting, roughly how many Walmarts are going to be getting, um, LGSs, how many LGSs are going to be getting, just to kind of average it out to see what the chances are You know, of finding an ultra premium collection if you are going hunting tomorrow. I wasn't able to find that that information, unfortunately. So if I do get that information in time, I will make a video You know, over the next few days to give you an idea of what is going to come out and how limited it is. Uh, it's very unfortunate that the market price for that specific uh, box right now is as high as it is. Uh, like I said in a past video, I do understand why you know some LGSs are getting to the point of charging $400, $500 and sticking around that market price so that way bots don't buy them up. But at the same time, I feel like there are things that can be done in order to eliminate things like I don't know, a Charizard and Breaks in Rainbow Rare does not always have to be a Charizard and Breaks in Rainbow Rare. You know, they could change the UPC to that. They could update the pricing in advance and they could have the Ultra Premium Collection just masked as the Charizard and Breaks in Rainbow Rare. And they could just set that quantity as soon as a video goes live and that way they can just let people know, hey, the Charizard and Breaks in Rainbow Rare is actually the Ultra Premium Collection. But unfortunately, uh, not everybody does that. Not everybody goes that extra mile, I guess, and tries to figure out those things. So I'm, hope, I'm hoping things get better. Um, but unfortunately, that's kind of where we're at right now. And hopefully, you know, LGSs will kind of come around and think of different ways that they can kind of make sure that they're feeding everybody, you know, in their community at a, a fair and respectable level. Uh, with that being said, guys, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, listen to me ramble, talk about business. I love this stuff, so I hope that you do too. If you do, make sure to hit that like button down below. Make sure to comment um, to kind of help the algorithm share the video. Uh, sharing the video also helps, but most importantly, hit that subscribe button because we got big goals and goals can only be hit if you hit that subscribe button, at least this specific goal. Uh, but until tomorrow where we announce the winner of week number two, um, I guess I will see you then. Thanks, guys. Peace.